picture I'm on here. Well, but you know, already had me, and uh, I was uh, I'm thankful to be here. It's always a blessing for these several years to be able to come and uh, be in the meeting and be around God's folks and special place in our heart here. And uh, sure do love this church and everything that's uh, consistent. I feel like every, all year long, uh, I feel like it, it intermingles uh, with, uh, you know, we, we're in several meetings with um, Brother Eli and then Brother Josh, Brother Kerry, then Brother Bobby and Brother Joey, and then the Powells, and it just intermingles, and Brother Lindsay's, and uh, uh, it's a great testimony that this church has, uh, that God has used them, and uh, so I just, I appreciate what I get to take home, uh, and uh, Brother Ronnie loves to pick on me, and so a while ago, he was picking on my stature, and so uh, I looked at him, and I said, well, I hope you get to preach this week, and uh, since he didn't do much of it last night, amen, and, uh, so... Uh, but, uh, but uh, no, I'm just kidding, and uh, just kidding. If you got a Bible, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Thank you again for the honor, Brother Joey, and uh, I'll be very mindful of the time. And uh, um, again, thank you for letting us stand. Uh, I want to, if the Lord would let us this morning, just. Uh, uh, deal around a few verses through maybe verse 10, verse number 11. Uh, but I do want to read uh, uh, all the way through that if the Lord, of course, you know very familiar scripture, but I want to pull out two different, uh, two different references in these verses uh, that uh, the Lord would let us dwell upon a couple words uh, this morning. The Bible said, It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Paul said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one called up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was called up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect. Notice this word, weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am, here's the word again, weak, then am I strong. I am become a fool in glory. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, Though I be nothing. Lord, again, we want to thank you. Tell you we love you and we, Lord, you're so good to us that we don't even deserve, Lord, to, to even really mention your name, of how good you've been to us. But, Lord, we want to magnify, praise you, glorify you in all that we do. Thank you for what's already been, Lord, said in these days and these meetings, how it's encouraged and helped and fed our souls. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Joey, his precious family, this church. And God, what they mean to us. And Lord, thank you for this meeting and what it means. Lord, but would you make preaching easy just for a little while for us. And we'll thank you, Lord, to do that which you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time in the first part of the chapter, uh, but I just do want to mention that several things that Paul mentioned. If you notice in verse number 5, Paul deals with those things that God revealed to him in, in secret. Uh, in other words, God showed him something that uh, he was not allowed to talk about. And can I just make mention of this, that there are some things that are in our life that God will show you that may not be meant for anybody else. It may just be meant between you and the Lord. And uh, a lot of times we get in trouble because we want to impress people by, by maybe what we think we've learned or maybe what God uh, has showed us or maybe, uh, or maybe there are some things that God shows us that are meant just for us. Uh, to keep in our hearts. And uh, uh, matter of fact, Paul in another part of the scripture says that he chose to what not. He, there's some things Paul just said, I'm going to keep my mouth shut about uh, because there, there, you know, there, there's no purpose in me saying it. Uh, and so Paul was interested in verse 5. He said that of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory. Uh, he, he was interested that, that the proper glory would be given to the proper individual. Uh, and amen. That, and that, that's important, is it not? That, uh, that, that the glory of God, that His glory needs to be placed on the right individual. Verse 6, he said, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me. He said, I don't want to gloat in what I've heard or seen. I want the glory to be given to the right individual, but I don't want to gloat over the information that I have. I, I, I don't want to be arrogant about what God has showed me uh, and what was said last night with Brother Kerry talking about our rights, how that we, if not careful, we'll look down on people because maybe God showed us some things that, uh, and we'll be critical of them uh, because the, we, maybe we think that we know more than what they know. But really, with that kind of attitude, we're really pretty ignorant, really, with, with, with what we know. Amen? So he's interested in not gloating. He's interested in not glorying. Verse number 6, he didn't want to give the wrong idea. Uh, he said here, he said that I, I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that uh, he heareth of me. Paul wanted to uh, portray the right idea here in his life. But I'm interested in two different words that's mentioned and mentioned several other times that Paul would mention it, but just want to deal with where it's at here this morning. Paul said here in verse number 9, he said, my, my grace, the Lord said, my grace uh, is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then he goes on to say in verse number 10, Paul said, for when I am weak, then... Am I strong? The word weak or weakness here means to be without strength. It means to be powerless or needy. Uh, we find that there's reference made in the book of 1 Corinthians to it being an idea of being more feeble. If you do remember in Daniel chapter number 7, that picture we get uh, in the book of Revelation, that, uh, that we're reminded that, that the saints of the Most High are being worn out, are they not? They're being worn out. They're being wearing away. They're, they're being harassed continually. They're being afflicted mentally. Several different times in the Scripture, the Bible mentions the word affliction. It means a pressing or a pressure or a distress or a strait that we are suffering or we are being troubled with. That word buffet there as well means a troubling or a, uh, if you will, a, a wrapping with the fence. That's a constant, continual battle that we have in our own selves. The word weakness, the word weak. This is what I want to preach on this morning. When I feel like I don't have anything to offer. When I feel like I don't have anything to offer. In these days and times, I'm just going to be real honest with you and be as transparent as I can. I relate more with that word weak than I've ever related in my own life. Because I feel like I have nothing to offer. I feel like in my, in my, in my life, I feel like that in, 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 my, in my pastoring, in my preaching, 
uh, even in my friendship, being uh, 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 even my, my failure as a parent, my failure as a husband, my failure as a friend, I feel very weak. I, I, I feel like there is weakness that I am constantly dealing with. And I feel like to you even this morning, and I'm not saying this, I feel like I've gotten to the place where it seems like I have nothing to offer. I find that Paul felt the same way. Paul reminds us that it is in this weakness that he found out some things about the Lord. I have constantly grew up in the, as Brother Kerry referenced, I grew up in the athletic world and, uh, and uh, uh, I, 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 was a, I was a pole vaulter. No, I'm just kidding, I wasn't a pole vaulter. Amen. i make sure some of y'all is awake, Amen. Uh, but I have been constantly, amen, I've been constantly in my life driven with this statement. You've got to be stronger. You've got to be stronger. You've got to be stronger. You've got to do things to make you stronger. Well, can I ask y'all a question? What happens when I can't get more stronger? What happens when I have the inability to get stronger? What happens when it feels like when I've gotten to the very place that I draw strength from that I have found that I, 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 I'm weak in that area? I'm weak. So the Lord moved me in these scriptures and helped me tremendously. I want you to notice here quickly in verse number 7 that Paul mentions something about the pain of this weakness. He said, unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Notice here, he mentions something about the personality of this pain. He said it was a thorn. That little word thorn there means a sharp wooden stake of torture uh, the little word buffet means to strike or to rape with a fist, to be mistreated over and over and over and over again. We make these statements all the time. Ain't nobody going to mistreat me. Ain't nobody going to do me wrong. Then what are you going to do when God gives you a thorn or a messenger that it is their job to constantly mistreat you? I'll never forget what one preacher said. He said, be careful. I believe it was Brother Ken made this statement several years ago. He said, be careful of getting rid of your devil. they just be one to take its place. We think that we have our rights, Brother Kerry, but we have no rights. And, and, and we, we, are, we are at the disposal of the Savior. And we are at the disposal of His will in our life. And if it's His choosing today to allow a messenger of Satan to bring some kind of thorn in our life that constantly keeps us uh, hurting, then we ask ourselves, why do I hurt? Why do I want to hurt? It could be today that it is in that area that God is revealing our true weakness that we have to figure out. It's the place of the pain. He said it was in the flesh. This is the affliction of a physical man. But can I say to you, it's not only physical. Thorns are not limited to this physicality. There's emotional pain. There is depression. There's loneliness. There is heartbreak. There is doubt. Many struggle with holiness. Many struggle with sin. Many struggle with spiritual pride. And it brings a sense of weakness to our life. You see the place of this, of this pain. And I, I don't know if you admit it today, but let's just go ahead and uh, put it out there. We're not as, we're, we're, we, we don't have it all together as we want everybody to think we have. We, we may think we've got them fooled, and we may think we've got everybody thinking we've got it all together, but honestly, we're nothing more than a bunch of messed up people trying to tell another bunch of messed up people how to get to somebody that ain't messed up. Because we're all messed up. And I, that this facade of trying, to, uh, 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 of trying to carry on some kind of image that, that, we never, that we never struggle. 
and that we never have problems and that we never, uh, that we never fall short. I, I, I'm at that place in my own spiritual life where I'm almost scared to even preach about weakness because it develops a, uh, it develops a thoughts in people to look at you in a certain way. I think, well, how dare him say that about weakness? And I understand we're to be strong in the Lord, but can I ask you a question? What do I do and how do I get to the place where I'm strong in the Lord, where I am constantly dealing with weakness in my flesh, in my mind? You see, it's persistence here. He uses the word buffet. That's a verb. It's a present tense. It's an active voice. It means it continues. It never stops. You're looking for a place for that thing to end, but it does not end. Five years, ten years, uh, it doesn't end. It constantly keeps going. We wonder why. It's because God is revealing Himself in our weakness. The pain of it. Number two, if you notice verse 7 and 8, look what he said, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh of a messenger of Satan, or the messenger of Satan to buffet me. The purpose is, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. What is the purpose, Paul, of this thorn? What is God trying to do in this thorn, in your weakness, and, uh, and this sense of feeling like you have nothing to offer anybody. Can I tell you what he's doing through this purpose? He is regulating Paul's faith. He said that, he said that I, I do not want to be exalted above measure. There are some things that, uh, that, that this thorn and this weakness was going to keep him from, and that was from being prideful and arrogant. It was from being in a place to where he thinks he's got the upper hand on everybody. You ever met anybody like that? You ever met a preacher like that? You ever met somebody that... Uh, you ever met a deacon like that? Amen. Uh, you ever met a church member like that? To where they think they have the upper spiritual hand on anybody. They're not willing to be transparent and honest this morning. They're willing, to, they're willing to the fact of the matter. Uh, they, they, they've gotten to that place to where they're exalted above measure. Can I, can I just stop and say this real quickly? We better be careful how God uses us. And when God does use us, we don't let pride rob God of what He's doing. Because if you're sitting in this building today and you're a preacher, a pastor, and you have preached and God has used you, if you're not careful before you get to your car in the parking lot, you'll think, boy, I really did something tonight. I really, boy, I really showed them. I really got that. I, maybe they'll have me back. Maybe, maybe I'll get to come back. Boy, we really sung a good in the night, but did you see them altars? I love this phrase. Boy, we had a good service. There wasn't no preaching tonight. I love good singing. And Lord, they're some of the best sitting in this building right now. But I'm going to tell you, if God's are doing anything, it ain't because of us today. It's because of Him. And we best not get exalted above measure. He was regulating Paul's faith, but he was also rejuvenating Paul's faith. Paul said he was weak. But God's going to show him something about His grace through that weakness and he was going to reveal to him that in that weakness, in that weak place, that he was going to find out that, 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 that it wasn't him that had anything to offer. That's really where I want to dwell this morning on these last two places. He said in verse number 9, he said, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, most gladly will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He's given him and showed him something about the pain and the purpose. And now he's given him the promise in verse number 7. Paul reminds us there was given to him that thorn. But now God's given him a promise. He's given him a promise that God is going to be sufficient. And can I say it like this, and kind of, kind of, uh, if you will, what helped me, when I have found in my weakness I don't have anything to offer, I have found that Jesus has everything to offer. 
and he knew me before he ever saved me. He knew I would have nothing to offer. He knew I would come up short. He knew I brought nothing to the table. He knew me in my sin. He knew me in my failure. He knew me in all of my messed up situation. But he loved me anyway. And he saved me anyway. And he let me come to him when I had nothing to give to him. When I had nothing to offer, he had everything to offer. He said, my grace is sufficient. When you feel like you can't, when you feel like you can't do, when you feel like you can't go, would you be honest? There is something down inside of the believer that rares up and stirs up and the grace of God begins to rise up in us when we feel like we can't go and we can continue on for the glory of God even in our weakness this morning. He said it was his divine sufficiency. That word sufficient means to be possessed of an unfailing strength. Of an unfailing strength. To be enough. To be enough. You go to the book of Ezekiel. It amazes me a statement Ezekiel made. Ezekiel talked about, about the Lord speaking to him. And then the Bible said that afternoon his wife died. And then the next day Ezekiel got up and went and preached again. I don't get all that. I know it's there. But the Bible said Ezekiel had time with the Lord that afternoon. The Bible said, read it. Go back and look it up and study it. The Bible said Ezekiel's wife died and the very next day he went back to doing what God told him to do. I don't get it. And I realize this. The reason I don't get it is because I ain't got there yet. And the grace that God gives is the grace that's needed when we get there. How much grace do I need right now with wherever I'm walking and wherever I'm standing? That's exactly how much grace is going to be given. Now I understand on the right, the left, the front, the back there, we are surrounded by the mercy and the grace of God. But understand there are some things I look back now that I thought I am weak and I don't have the power and I don't want to go on. But there was something inside of the believer that grace rose up and said, I'm going to give you something to help you walk through that weakness. So that I might get the glory and my name would be magnified. He said it is sufficient. He said this promise I've made for divine sufficiency, he said, but it's also my divine sovereignty. He said my strength is made perfect in weakness. God gets the glory for all things. Do you know even God gets, should get glory for the strange things? You know God does some strange things. I didn't say wrong things. I said strange things. He's used donkeys to speak. He's used fish to pay taxes. Amen. He's spoken spoken out of whirlwinds. He's calmed storms. And you know what else? He's used me and you. That's pretty strange. Why would God ever use us? I mean, honestly, let's just, let's, let's just go ahead and call it like it is. We know us as good as He knows us. If He knows us better, and why would God ever use me? We are strange creatures. I don't like my mind. I definitely don't like my flesh. I don't like how I feel some days. I don't like some of my family. I mean, that's being honest. I love my wife and my kids, but they some of my family I don't like. And they don't like me either. I love them. But you know why? They, I, 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 we're strange to them. Strange. But Bobby, we don't fit in. We're that round little cog trying to go in that square hole. We're strange. And if you're not careful, the strangest of how we live, you'll even let the world make you think you're weak. But you got a secret. You got a secret. And that secret is that God's grace is sufficient in weakness. I, I'm gonna, I'll be done right here. He showed us the pain, the purpose, the promise. 
But will you notice with me again in verse number 9 and 10, he shows us the prize. He said that he's, he's, he's most gladly, therefore I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions. Here's the prize for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. Do you know today that I... I that we're constantly looking. And if you'll pay attention in verse number 10, he uses an interesting word. He said, therefore I take pleasure in. In infirmities. In reproaches. That's when people talk about you. Anybody ever talked about you? Huh? They're probably talking about you right now. You don't even know it. In necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. We're constantly wanting God to get us out. But that ain't where we're going to find the grace we need to get with our weakness. It's in. You see, he shows us something about his power here. He said that, he said, my grace is sufficient. But he showed us something about his, about praise. Paul said, uh, most gladly, therefore, I are the glory in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'll never forget an illustration I read several years ago. And I had preached early on in the, my preaching on the glory and the thorn and out of this chapter. And I'll never forget, I read uh, after a gentleman. And he said that, that and this is, how he, this is how he described this situation with Paul. He said that God had placed Paul in a dark room with no windows. That he had placed him there and that he didn't put a doorknob or a keyhole on his side. There was no way for Paul to get out of it. He said that's what he found out about his weakness and his thorn and the buffeting, that God had put him in a dark room of hurt and pain and ridicule and a thorn. And he said that the only thing that could unlock that, Brother Luke, was his praise. Is that he was teaching Paul that the thorn was not to be complained about and not to be, uh, not to be uh, if you will, contentious about. But he said it was there that when he began to glorify God in his thorn and in this weakness that he heard footsteps coming down the hall and he heard some keys rattling and God stuck the key in, opened the door and Paul come out magnifying God and saying, blessed be his holy name and I'll just simply stay in the thorn, in the weakness because it's there that I find God's goodness and God's grace and God's glory and he said, you can have all the pride, you can have all the accolades, I'll take the glory of God in your day because it's worth praising his good name he said it brought me praise he said it brought me power but that word in it brought me peace and God may never get me and you out but thank God we sure can praise him in and when I am weak he's strong and when, I die, when I can't offer anything he's offered everything he said, I knew you was like that before I ever saved you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you had nothing to offer. But I've got everything. I've given you everything. And I'm going to let you have everything that I've got so you can do what you need to do for my name's sake. When you don't feel like you have nothing to offer, I just want to remind you, he already knows. Because he's got everything to offer to you. Lord, we thank you.